He's that connected. Um, you know, I think it's like you, we open up category of friend and enemy. A friend is someone who is the same as me. The enemy is someone who is other than me. But then we have this category of the neighbor. And the neighbor is potentially someone who is other than me, who I have to share social space with, but who I'm also, I'm, who I'm sharing life with. I think of when I used to live in the village close to here, there was a guy I lived next door to who played music very loud into the middle of the night. This paramilitary guy would get very drunk and I would have to nervously go round and knock the door occasionally and go, excuse me, would you mind awfully turning down your very good music? I am enjoying it, but it is four in the morning. Um, and the threats of this big guy, he's, you know, very drunk, but going like, this is a neighbor. There's something that I am strange to him because I'm living in this kind of working class estate, going to university. I'm a weird phenomenon for him. He's a weird phenomenon for me, and we would both other each other if we could, but we share a wall. And um, so I don't know if the category of neighbor connects with this at all. Um, Absolutely, so. yeah. Um, the friend-enemy distinction would seem, on the surface of it, to make kind of a clean job of this question of the threatening, anxiety-producing otherness and unknown in, in the fellow human being because it seems to say, oh, it's over there in the enemy. They're clearly dangerous. What I don't know about them is clearly something to be avoided and kept at arm's length. They're clearly a threat. What we are less good at, it seems to me, is recognizing that even the friend, the neighbor, is haunted by what we don't know, that we've domesticated our friend with for the most part, an overestimation of what we do know about them. And by the way, often it seems to me, this is a little bit of a tough pill to swallow, but I think it's true. Even with what we regard as dear friends, there are often real limits on how much we share with each other. As if we need to keep uh, at a certain level of revealment and sharing and not go too much deeper. That was quite special. And only under special circumstances would we do it. So I'm wondering if the neighbor is not also here, very, very much held in a kind of anxiety which we usually control by all of our sort of signs and emblems of easygoing friendship. We have our routines, we have our mutual likes, you know. We cheer for the same sport team and so on and so forth, drink the same beer at the same bar. And that's kind of enough. But what we really know, consider, I mean, how many married couples, what do you, at some level, really know of each other? I would wager that even the closest relationships have enormous black zones of unknowing. Which sometimes, then the question becomes, well, what do we do with that? How do we posture ourselves toward that unknowing? Do we just want to carry on oblivious? I think this is what often we do. Or do you really dig in and try to gain some ground on what in the other remains beyond your grasp? Well, that's the big challenge. Uh, and this was Lacan's comment when Freud says, Oh, no, 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 that Christian demand to love thy neighbor. No, 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 says Freud. I'm not going to squander my love on strangers. And Lacan says, the mistake Freud makes there is not seeing how much even our friends remain strangers. The enemy is in the neighbor at some level of our apprehension. We're still defended against them. The real challenge is opening yourself up to the other as other, friend or enemy.